Hallelujah. Ha. Hallelujah. Happy. Ni neno la furaha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Utukufu kwa Mungu. Glory to God. Tukufu kwa Mungu. Thank you, Lord. Asante. If you will be hungry, iwapo unataka kuwa mtu wa kukasirika, Yesu atakuja. Right through the crowd. Akipitia kwenye umati. He will put his arms around you. Ataweka mikono yake juu yako. How, how can you say that? Unasema uwezaje kusema hivyo? Because I feel like he put his arms around me right now. Kwa maana nahisi kana kwamba Yesu ameweka mikono yake mabegani mwangu. I feel like he's holding his arms around me. Nahisi kana kwamba ananikumbatia. Uh, Dr. Robert, uh, uh, yeah, Dr. Robert, I just want to show you what I feel coming. Nataka ni kuonyeshe navyo hisi simama hapa. So pretend that you me. Okay. You, you are me. We look alike. Jifanye yeah. kwamba wewe yeah, ni mimi na tunafanana. We look totally alike. Tunafanana na mtumishi wa Mungu Robert. This is what I feel. This is what I feel. That's what I feel. Na hisi hivyo. And that's what the Lord's going to do for you. Kile Bwana anaenda kukufanyia. That's what I feel. Ivo ndivyo navyo hisi. So you shall not be concerned for your safety. Wewe hautajishughulisha makujali. Jinsi ulivyo kwa sababu malaika Your enemies shall be cut off. Adui zako wataondolewa. You shall rejoice and be glad. Utafurahia na kusisimka. You shall not stop that which I'm doing. Wewe hautakoma watazuia kila anachofanya Mungu. For I have you said the Lord. Kwa sababu niko nawe asema Bwana. I have you in my arms. Niko nawe kwenye mikono yangu. And I walk with you. Natembea nawe. None shall touch you. Hakuna atakaye kugusa kamwe. None shall touch you. Hakuna atakaye kugusa. Hallelujah come on Hallelujah. the same for every one of you Hivyo the same for every one of you wenu, kwa kila moja wenu it will be about you as a wall of fire itakuwa ni ukuta no harm and evil will come nigh to you hakuna uovu utakaribia none will no one will die prematurely hakuna atakaye kufa kabla wakati wake you will run your race utakimbia mbio zako hadi ukamilishe listen to me Nisikie. The devil does not control your destiny. Shetani yeye adhibiti hatima yako. God yako. controls your destiny. Ni Mungu anayetawala hatima yako. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. As I was standing I felt the Lord come and wrap his arms around me. Lipo simama hapa na lihisi Bwana akija akanikumbatia. And the Lord said use him as an example but that's what I'm going to do to him right now. Bwana akaniambia mtumie kama mfano kwa sababu ndivyo nitakavyofanya sasa hivi. Amen. Amina. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Bwana asifiwe. You may be seated. Mwaweza keti. Now I want to make a couple of declarations. Nataka nifanye matangazo fulani. Right here in Kenya this day. Sasa hivi hapa Kenya leo. Don't miss anything between now and 5:30. Usipitwe na lolote kati ya hapa na saa 11:00 na nusu. The meeting will be ended tonight. It's over. It's done. Mkutano unaisha siku ya leo. It'll be history. Utakuwa ni historia. But God is on the move. Lakini Mungu angali anatembea. And I want to say this to you revival is not coming. Na ningependa niwaambie revival haitakuja. It's here. Mwaka huu. It's not coming. Iko hapa. It's not coming. It's here now. Revival haiji iko hapa tayari. And what you are feeling and experiencing. Na kile ambacho unahisi na unapata. Even this next Sunday when you get in your pulpit. Hata hii Jumapili ukiingia kanisani kwako. Invite the Holy Spirit to come. Mwalike roho mtakatifu aje. I'm not saying don't get prepared. Mimi sijakwambia usijiandae. But be prepared. Lakini jiandae. To just step back. 
kukanyanga kidogo hatu wa nyuma. And let God touch his people. Na wache mungu awaguze watu wake. And watch what happens. Na utazame kitaka kitendeka. The power kitendeka. of God is going to hit every church represented here. Guguza mungu zitaguza kila kanisa hili wakilishu wa hapa. And then give a call for people. Give an altar call for people. Na kisha ufanya mualiko. To get saved, wakoke, recommit their life, make sure, uhakikishe, and let your altar fill, na uache and lead people in a fresh commitment. Na kisha uongoze watu wakajito emaratena. It doesn't matter how long they've been saved. Haijalishi wa meokoka miaka mingapi. And then this fire of revival will hit every member of your church. Na umoto wa ufufio utagonga kila kona. And then mobilize them to win souls. Na kisha uatayarishe wakalete mabuno. And let's see Kenya shake. Na utaona Kenya imetingizwa by the mighty hand of God. Kwa mkono ulio mkuu wa Mungu. Can you say amen? Sema amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord Jesus. Asante Yesu Kristo. Blessed be your name. Jina lako liheshimike. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, you may be seated. Unaweza kuketi. I'm not I don't think I, I, I don't believe I shared this here yesterday I might have but the Mi, days all run Mimi sidhani ya kwamba nilishiriki haya jana lakini inawezekana nilifanya hivyo I believe I shared this up in Eldoret Naamini haya mambo niliyashiriki kule Eldoret And um, it's something that took place in my life Ni kitu ambacho kiko ndani ya moyo wangu in, in the early hours of March the 17th Aha katika masaya asubuhi mapema of 2020 mwaka wa 2020 it's okay god said that lady free mungu akaweke huyo mama huru just take care of it please thank you muangalie mshughulikie asante but something supernatural happened to me lakini kitu ambacho ni cha kiungu kilitendeka kwa my whole life changed maisha yangu yote ikageuka i was not praying for it mimi sikuwa ninaliombea. I was not fasting for it. Mimi sikuwa nimefunga kuomba. I was even asking for it. I hata sikuwa nimeuliza. I was praying. Nilikuwa tunaomba. I was crying out. Nilikuwa namlilia Mungu. But I wasn't I wasn't asking for what happened. Lakini mimi sikuwa naombea haswa kile ambacho kilitokea. What happened took me by surprise. Kilichotokea hata mimi kilinishangaza. And I've learned something about God. Na nikajifunza kitu kumhusu Mungu. Because I'm a father. Maana mimi ni baba. I love to surprise my children. Ninapenda kuwashangaza wanangu. And I've got grandchildren. Na ni pia niko na wajukuu. And I love to surprise my grandchildren. Na ninapenda kuwashangaza wajukuu wangu. I've learned something about my father. Na nimejifunza na Mungu wangu wa mbinguni. He loves to surprise his children. Anapenda kuwashangaza watoto wake. So I want to say to the whole of Kenya. Kwa hivyo ningependa niambie Kenya nzima. God has big surprises for you. Mungu ako na mambo ya kushangaza kwa ajili yako. Now, I'll just say this about the joy. Nitasema haya kuhusu furaha. How many enjoyed the joy yesterday? Ni wangapi walifurahia furaha ya jana? As a parent, kama mzazi mimi, we tickle our children. Aha, tunafanya watoto wetu wacheke. Why do we do that? Kwa nini tunafanya hivyo? We like to hear them laugh. Tunapenda wanapocheka. So God likes to tickle tickle his children. Kwa hivyo Mungu pia anapenda kutuchekesha chekesha. He's a father. Yeye ni baba. Where do you get the tickle thing from? Unapochekesha uh, mtoto. You, he's from your father. Ni kwamba yeye ni baba. So many people in the church. Kwa hivyo watu wengi kanisani. They haven't been tickled in a long time. Hawajachekeshwa muda mrefu. Today God will tickle you. Leo Mungu atakufanya ucheke na utajazwa na furaha. Can you say amen? Sema amen. Hallelujah. 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 So my whole life changed. Maisha yangu yote yakageuka. I want to read a passage of scripture to you. Ningependa kusoma maandiko kwa ajili yako. And I'm going to read from Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 14. Na nitasoma Habakkuk mlango wa pili na kifungu cha 14. For the earth maana nayo dunia for Kenya au hata Kenya shall be filled itajazwa with the knowledge na ufahamu of the glory of the Lord. Na utukufu wake Mungu as the waters cover the sea. Kama vile maji yaliyofunika bahari. If you go to the sea there's not a place the water doesn't cover. Ukitazama bahari hakuna pahali ambapo kuna vumbi. That means kuna maanisha Kenya Kenya will be covered itafunikwa with the glory of God. Na utukufu wa Mungu. Isaiah 11 and verse 9 says 
Isaiah 11 mstari ule wa 11. Yes, shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. Ya kwamba nayo dunia itajazwa na ufahamu wa utukufu wa Mungu. So it's not just the glory. Kwa hivyo sio utukufu peke yake. The knowledge of the glory. Ni ufahamu wa utukufu wa Mungu. When I first got up here and I talked about the wedding at Cain of Galilee. Wakati nipo Kanyanga hapa nikanena kuhusu harusi iliyokuwa kana ya Galilee alipogeuza maji kawa divai. The Bible says in doing this miracle. Maandiko inasema katika kufanya huu muujiza. He showed forth his glory. Alionyesha utukufu wake. Why does he show forth his glory? Na kwa nini akadhihirisha utukufu wake? What does that mean? Na hayo mambo yana maana gani? He showed forth his goodness. Inamaanisha alionyesha wema wake he just showed off yeye alijionyesha mwenyewe he showed up and showed off Ali, alitokelezea na akajionyesha Why? kwa sababu gani because he's god kwa maana yeye ni mungu he doesn't need any modest approval yeye hahitaji mtu yeyote aweze kumdhibitisha but he will come lakini ataja kwa wale ambao walio na njaa na kwa wale walio na kiu na atajionyesha kwao na atajidhihirisha kwao can you say amen asema amen hallelujah hallelujah glory to god utukufu kwa bwana as we watch the entrance <laughs> tunatazama pale kiingilio it's funny to me because i'm i'm trying to minister and everybody's like mambo haya yananichekesha maana kiapo anashazama Tumeona mambo mengi kitaendeka hapa Kenya, Na hapa ni Kenya tunaweza hata kuwa na ndovu anapitia hapa kwa uwanja Tafadhali nitazame na unisikize hapa Amen Amen <laughs> with the knowledge na ufahamu of the glory of the lord wa utukufu wa mungu there won't be any place in kenya hakutakuwa na pahali kenya nzima that you won't see the glory of god ambapo hautaiona utukufu wa mungu in every town katika kila mji in every village katika kila kijiji in every city katika kila mji mkuu hallelujah hallelujah numbers 14:21 the earth shall be filled a uh, uh, kitabu cha hesabu uh, 14 maandiko yanasema dunia itajazwa and this means god's moral beauty na hii inamaanisha ni urembo wake mungu his presence na uwepo wake and his very character na pia uh, tabia yake is on display itaweza kudhihirishwa to a lost and dying world na itaonyeshwa kwa dunia ambayo imepotea na inaangamia amen hallelujah now Growing Sasa, up in Pentecost. Uh, nikiwa nimelelewa kama mtu wa Pentecost. I have heard many stories. Nimesikiza hadithi nyingi. People having dreams. And, watu wakipata ndoto and seeing visions. Watu wakiona maono and I had had dreams. Na nikawa pia nimepata ndoto. And seen visions but not like in front of me as na, na I pia nikaona maono lakini sio uh, waziwazi wazi mbele zangu. As a minister kama mtumishi wa Mungu I would walk out, nilikuwa nikitembea nje and I see myself growing to somebody and saying something lakini najiona ninamtembelea mtu fulani nikimwambia mambo fulani someone comes to my attention and then I see myself walking towards them calling them ni kama ninaona simioni akija kwangu na ninaona nikimuita na kumwambia neno la Mungu and it's not like that all the time so somebody said please see na, something now i na see vile kila wakati usiniambia ati sasa ni onye tafadhali something up I, I, you know if you make something up then you pretending ukijaribu kuiga ama kuigiza jambo lolote unajifanya and then you'll never see the real na basi hautaona kilicho halisi you will always be pretending maana watu wanajia wanaiga so you don't make anything up kwa hivyo usijaribu kuleta uigizaji usijisikie usi kama unasukumwa Only what the Lord says. Fanya ama sema kile Bwana anasema useme. Maybe you got a healing ministry. Labda wewe umepatiwa huduma ya uponyaji. Place and there's no miracles really happening. Lakini kuna pahali unaenda na muujiza unakataa kutokea. Endelea kuhubiri neno. And give altar calls. Get people na, na pia ufanye mwaliko wa madhabahu. And if God wants to heal, heal, heal. Na, na kama Mungu anataka kuponya ataponya. You know, don't try to force something. Usilazimishe. Are you with me? Unanisikiza. It's like if you if you're a prophet 
Maana kama wewe ni nabii. Maybe the Lord has nothing to tell the people. Labda Mungu hajasema haja lolote kwa wana, kwa watu. I, mean, I just preach the word. Mimi nimehubiri tu neno. Still talking to people. Maana hajani hajaongea na watu. The prophet's coming. Unasema nabii anakuja, akona neno. Everybody wants a word. They all want. Na kila mtu anataka neno binafsi. Give me a word. Nipe neno. People call you up. Watu wanakupigia simu. You have a word for me. Di uko na neno je langu? Uh, no. Hapana. No, you have a word for me. Je, uko na neno langu? I don't. Mimi sina. No, you have a word for me. Hapana uko na neno kwa ajili yangu wewe. I don't have a word for you. Sikiza sina neno kwako wewe. All right. I do have a Sawa, word. Niko nalo. The word is there is no word. The neno ndilo hili. Read your Bible. Soma Biblia. Read your Bible. Soma Biblia yako. Yes, yeah, you preaching. Ni kweli unahubiri? Working night and day. Na unafanya kazi usiku kwa mchana. People call you 2 o'clock in the morning. Watu wanakupigia simu saa 8 asubuhi. Pastor. Mchungaji. Feel you have a word for me. Je, uko na neno kwa ajili yangu? Yes, I do. Ndio niko nalo. Go back to bed. Rudi ulale kidogo. <laughs> Go, go sleep man. Endelea kulala jamani. Bother me. Yeah. If God give me word I'll tell. I'm, Mungu akinipa neno nitakwambia. I'm not going to ever make anything up. Lakini mimi sitaunda chochote au niigize chochote. So what I'm about to tell you. Kile ambacho ninajiandaa kukuambia. Is the truth. Ni ukweli. The whole truth nothing but the truth so help me God. Ukweli mzima wala hakuna uongo na Mungu anisaidie. Because I was there when it happened. Maana nilikuepo kilichotokea. I was there when it took place. Nilikuepo wakati haya matukio yalifanyika. Amen. Amen. It was right at the March month of 2020. Ah uh, ilikuwa ni mwaka wa 2020 mwezi wa Machi. When everything started going upside down. Wakati ambapo dunia iligeuka na mambo ikafunga. In America. Kule Marekani. Um, and I don't want to get too much into it. We all saw the lunacy. Na ninajua wewe unaelewa ule wazimu ambao tulijionea. And the fear really that gripped the souls of men. Na ile hofu ambayo ilikumba dunia mzima. But anyway, when you're a minister, you're helping many people. Lakini kama wewe ni mtumishi lazima usaidie watu wengi na unaombea watu wengi. And it wasn't actually even my congregation. Na pia watu ambao ni wa kanisa langu. Our congregation was fine. Ah, kanisa langu lilikuwa sawa. Every one of them. Kila moja wa shirika wangu. People from foreign countries. Watu kutoka nchi tofauti. Kutoka Ufaransa. Southern Africa. Kutoka Afrika ya Kusini. Australia. Kutoka Australia. Asia. Pastor, please pray for me. Wanasema mchungaji niombe. We can't go my house and the police are standing outside. Sijui tutakaaje. We can't get food. Hatuwezi pata vyakula. It was horrendous. Na mambo yale yalikuwa ni ya kusumbua sana. Clicking. I've, eh. I've got nearly 4000 numbers in my phone. Na mimi niko na nambari 1400 kwa simu yangu. When you sleep when you wake up. Ukiamka ukilala simu inalia mfululizo. How are you doing? Unafanyaje ama unaendeleaje? Mambo si mazuri. Mambo mambo mengi haiko sawa. Na ukawa ni mzigo mzito kwangu. Na hata singeweza kulala. Nilikuwa nalala masaa matatu kila usiku. Na nikaendelea kuomba. Na kulikuwa na watu in, in America they were trying to kill everybody. Kule Marekani ambao walijaribu kuua kila mtu. And they were trying to get people infected. Na walijaribu iwezekanavyo waweze kuambukizana ugonjwa. Nilikuwa ninaombea watu waendelee kuishi and hai. We, we, we got I got doctors, I got vitamins, I got whatever I could. Nikapata madaktari, nikanunua vitamin na chochote ambacho ninaweza. We have 25,000 people across America stay alive. Na tuko na watu 1025 walioendelea kuishi. Maana tulijua. The moment they get them into the hospital. Ya kwamba wakiwaingiza tu mlango wa hospitali. They put them on a ventilator. Wataingiza kwenye ventilator. Or they get them on remdesivir. Au wataenda kuweka kwa mashine. And what if they put them on a ventilator and they did? Na wakiwaweka pale kwa mashini nilivyo watakufa na wiki mbili na walikuwa wanatengeneza pesa mingi sana kila mtu lazima angemlazimisha aingizwe kwa ventilator iwe anataka ama hataki 
There's only one man that we lost. Kulikuwa na mtu mmoja ambaye alipotea. And he lived in Dallas. Na alikuwa anaishi kule Dallas. He was a great man. He was 87 years old. Na alikuwa ni mzee, alikuwa na miaka 87. And pneumonia. Na alikuwa na pneumonia. And they stuck him on a bed and he was. Na wakamweka kwenye ile mashini ya kupumua. His wife had the same problem. We got to turn around. Bibi yake alikuwa na ile shida na tukamsaidia akapona, wakamweka. America is is a, is a killing fields America ni pahali penye mauaji where, where medical science becomes the butchers mahali ambapo wafanyikazi wa huduma za za matibabu ni wauaji no different to the gas chambers hakuna tofauti na kile no chumba difference. cha wauaji cha ujerumani extermination of people ambapo watu waliuliwa kwa gesi ya misumo had diseases like cancer and All the other stuff they couldn't even get treatment. Na ndio tuko na magonjwa kama saratani ambayo haina matibabu. And then a lot of people na watu when, wengi when elderly people die they die of pneumonia that's what they die. Wakati wengi wazee wanakufa wanakufa juu ya pneumonia. But the moment they come in, it's covered. So it's covered. Lakini wakifikishwa hospitalini inasemekana ni covid 19. In Florida. In Florida. Kule Florida. One man got eaten by a crocodile. Mtu mmoja aliliwa na mamba. They said it was covid. Wakasema amekufa kwa ajili ya covid 19. I'm not making this up. Mimi sijakwambia mambo ya kuigiza. Ehe. Covid. Wakasema ni covid. So it didn't matter what you died of. Ukiulizwa mtu alikufa na nini? Covid. Wanasema ni covid. It wasn't. Haikuwa covid. All those numbers were fake. I've got all the numbers. Hizo hesabu zote ambazo zilitangazwa ni za uongo. And now there's major investigations. People should go to prison. Na, na inawezekana kutakuwa na, na mambo ya uchunguzi na watu watakuwa gerezani. Kwa ajili ya majanga kinyume na wanadamu. It's a fact. Hiyo ni ukweli. And you can read it in my book The Phantom Virus. Unaweza soma kwenye kitabu changu. So this was not what people thought. Kwa hivyo hili halikuwa vile mlivyofikiria. The Lord had already warned me about it. Maana Bwana alikuwa ameshanipa ilani juu ya hii mambo. If you think COVID-19 was the last, kama unafikiria COVID-19 ndio ya mwisho. If you caved in COVID-19, na kama wewe uliweza kubabaika wakati wa COVID-19, nataka utazame one kilo atafanya miaka mitatu ijayo. You better be full of the Holy Ghost. Ni vizuri ujaze na roho mtakatifu. Na uamini Na uamini ishara na miujiza. Otherwise people will not make it worse. Kama sivyo wengi hawatapona. And I'm not talking fear, I'm talking faith. Na mimi sijakuja hapa kukuuzia hofu, nimekuambia ukweli. So I would spend hours in the day. Kwa hivyo nilikuwa natukua masaa mengi kila siku. Praying for people. Nikiombea watu. And people were in other parts of the country and I'm on my face crying out. Na sehemu nyingi nchi yote nilikuwa nalilia watu wengi nikiwaombea. Lord bring them out. Don't let them die. Bwana usiwache wafe walete na wape uhai. And God was gracious. Na Mungu akawa na neema nyingi. And so we were able to help many. Na kisha tukawasaidia wengi. But I was sleeping three hours a night. Lakini nilikuwa na alama saa matatu kila usiku. And I knew they were going to lock down na nilijua watafunga kila kitu. They wanted to lock everything down to Wali, never open again. Walitamani wafunge kila kitu na kisiwai funguliwa tena. Somebody said come on it, no no not true. Unaweza sema oh si no, ukweli ai hapana. Wa, walitamani hii sayari ya dunia ifungwe kabisa. And change the way we even operate. Na wakabadilisha hata vile watu wanavyofanya mambo. And I'm not saying I'm the result. Na mimi sisemi ya kwamba mimi ndiye niliwasababisha. But there was a pastor that I know. Lakini kuna mchungaji ambaye namjua. In Florida. Alikuwa kule Florida. Who said no? Aliyesema la hasha. And got arrested. Na akashikwa. And then they dropped all the charges. Na kisha baadaye wakasema hawana. And then the dominoes begin to fall across America. Hawana mambo ya kumshaki na Amerika kaanza kujua ukweli. Was somebody that looked like me. Maana alikuwa ni mtu anayefanana na mimi. They just said no absolutely not. Akasema la hasha. And he went to prison. Na akawekwa gerezani. Not long. Si miaka mingi imepita. 40 minutes. About dakika kama 40 zimepita. He fell asleep in the prison. Akalala kule gerezani because he was tired. Maana alikuwa amechoka. And then he went out. Na kisha baadaye akaachiliwa. If imagine if 10,000 pastors did Na, that. that nataka that. ujiulize kama wachungaji 10,000 kumi oh, wangefanya vile. And I know that there are many pastors that have told me here yeah, you didn't cave at all. Na ninajua kuna wachungaji wengi ambao wananiambia tunajua wewe haukusikiza ama kuogopa. All those that would not bow will not burn. Maana asikuweza ku, uh, kuinama. Can you say amen? Sema amen. So um 
I told Pastor Eric, I said, now we on the 300 city tour. Nikaambia mchungaji Eric tunaelekea mji wa 300 katika safari zetu. We had just run across Australasia. Ah uh, tumepitia Australasia yote. So we left on February the 3rd. Kwa hivyo tukaondoka mwezi wa Februari tarehe 3. Preach Sunday morning. Aikiwa Jumapili asubuhi. Super Bowl Sunday. Aha tukaelekea a Super Bowl Sunday. Everybody watches. Ah kila mtu utazama huo mchezo. A bunch of men in tights. Aha. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. Anyway, uh, moving si, right si lakini, uh, to And we approached and we flew straight to Hilo, Hawaii. Na tukaingia ndege tukaenda hadi kule Hawaii. We landed at 5. Tukaingia kule tukafika saa 11. 7 o'clock. Na saa moja jioni. And then we left the na, next morning na kisha tukaondoka siku iliyofuata we flew to fiji tukaingia nchi ya fiji well, we skipped the date line, so we lost monday monday was gone mahali ambapo uh, monday yote tulikuwa so kwa kwa, kwa safari tuesday night we were in fiji na siku ya jumanne au uh, siku tulikuwa fiji wednesday night we were in auckland new zealand na siku ya jumatano tukawa kule auckland new zealand thursday night we were in gold coast australia alhamisi tukawa gold coast australia friday night we were in brisbane ijumaa tukaingia kule nchi nyingine saturday we rested. Na Jumamosi tukalala ama tukapumzika. Na tukaendelea. Sunday night we were in Sydney. Usiku tukaingia Sydney. Monday night in Canberra, the capital of Australia. Jumatatu tukaingia Canberra kule Australia. Tuesday night we were in Hobart, Tasmania. Jumanne tukaingia Tasmania. Every night preaching. Kila usiku tunahubiri. Wednesday night we were in Melbourne. Jumatano tukaingia Melbourne. Thursday night we were in Adelaide. Alhamis tukaingia Adelaide. Friday night we were in Perth. Aha na 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 Juma na tukaingia kule Australia. And Saturday we took the day to do laundry and get everything ready for Na Jumamosi tukaoga tukaosha kila kitu. Sunday we flew into Singapore. Jumanne tukaama ama siku ya ya Sunday tukaingia Singapore. Singapore. Na ile siku ambayo tulingia Singapore. Could really see it's crazy. Kulikuwa ni mambo ya kushangaza. We were the only meeting in the whole nation. Aha tulikuwa ni nchi nzima. Every other church had shut down. Kila kanisa ilikuwa imefungwa. Nikasema mimi sitafunga niliingia Singapore kuhubiri injili. Na watu walikuwa wameshazoea kufunga. Na kila mahali wanaenda wakikupima joto. Wanaonyesha na ile buduki ya kupima temperature. Na unapita na wanasema wewe joto yako iko tu sawa. Na tukaingia. Na Praise God. Bwana asifiwe. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Thank you Jesus. Asante Yesu. Welcome to Karibu. the first lady. Karibu a uh, a uh, mama wetu wa kwanza wa taifa. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Utukufu kwa Bwana. We're so glad to have you with us today. Tumebarikiwa kuwa nawe siku hii ya leo. God bless you. Mungu akubariki. Amen. Amen. So um you know I have a sense of humor and I use it all the time. Unajua mimi ni mtu ambaye ako na ucheshi na saa zingine natumia ucheshi. Sometimes I will say something funny but people interpret the wrong way. Na wakati mwingine natoa kichekesho watu wanakosa kuielewa. He's upset. I'm not upset. Wanasema amekasirika. I just have a bit of sarcasm in my humor. Sina hasira. Mimi ni mtu ambaye anatumia kichekesho. Mimi natembea hivyo na akili yangu inafanya kazi hivyo. Picture me walking through scanners. Naomba unitazame nikipitia kule. Na wanachukua joto yangu. I'm in Singapore now and I'm walking. Niko Singapore na napitia pale. Your temperature is fine. Na ninaingia kwenye uwanja wa ndege unasema wewe joto yako iko sawa. Anasema iko sawa. I said I've got a fever. Na nikamwambia hapana mimi niko na joto. I said got a fever. Niko na joto mimi. They say okay we'll check again so Wakasema tutaangalia mara tena. Sir your temperature is fine. Wakasema wewe joto yako iko sawa. You have there's something wrong with your machine it's not measuring. Nikawaambia hii mashini yenu iko na kasoro mimi niko na homa. But the fire of God you know. So 
Unajua ukibeba moto wa Mungu. They said no no you fine. Wakasema uko sawa mzee. So anyway, I told my wife said you probably shouldn't play around like that. Ah uh, mke wangu akaniambia na wewe so, unaleta mchezo mahali pabaya so sana. I said okay. Nikamwambia ni sawa. Sometimes we got to listen to our wife. Kwa hivyo saa zingine ni nzuri kumsikiza mke wako wako na na hekima. I want to say this to all the preacher preachers. Ningependa kuambia wahubiri wote. To your wife. Tafadhali sikiza mke wako. And all the ladies said na wadada wote wazeme amen. There've been times when I've sat down with the pastor and his wife. Kuna wakati mambo nakaa chini na wachungaji na mke wake. Na Bwana niambia, I've been telling him all the time what to do. Nimemwambia kila wakati kile atakachofanya. Mkewe amekuwa akimwambia, lakini hasikizi. Thank God for godly woman. Na shukuru Bwana kwa ajili ya wake wa ambao ni wacha Mungu. Anyway, so na hata hivyo we, we finished the meeting in Singapore. Tukamalizia kongamano la Singapore. Monday night we in Jakarta. Aha, siku ya Jumatatu tukaingia hiyo nchi. Tuesday night we were in Bali. Ah, tukaingia Bali, Indonesia. Wednesday night we went into General Santos in the Philippines. Jumatano tukaingia kule Philippines. And then Thursday we were in Manila. Na hata Alhamis tukaingia Manila, Philippines. And you could see we like a boom coming down behind. Unaona ni kama mlipuko, As everything mlipuko was kila mahali. Maana kila kitu kimefungwa. And I said to my wife if they Nika, find anybody with Nika, this thing. Nikamwambia mke wangu akimpata mtu aliye na ugonjwa. Nitabidi ya kwamba watu wake kwenye quarantine kwa hotel Asia. Tutafungwa huku Asia. I like Asian food but I can't. Ninapenda chakula cha kule Asia. You know what I mean? Unanielewa? I love I love different cuisines. Ninapenda chakula cha tofauti. Lakini wakati mwingine unahitaji tu ufike nyumbani ule chako cha nyumbani. And so um, we were to leave that midnight at 12 o'clock. Kwa hivyo ili tupasa tuondoke usiku wa 8:00 saa 6. And then go to Ponape. Na tuingie kule Which is a little island in Micronesia. Ambayo ni kisiwa kidogo kule Asia. Have been waiting for me for 15 years to come. Mahali ambapo watu wamenisubiri miaka 15 niingie. And we were going to do one night there. Na ili tuhitaji tuhubiri usiku mmoja peke yake. Which would be Friday night. Maana itakuwa ni siku ya Ijumaa usiku. We would refuel the plane. Na kisha tujaze ndege mafuta. To Hawaii. Na tuondoke tuelekee Hawaii. Friday night of the same day. Ijumaa usiku ile ile siku. In Honolulu kule Honolulu. That way I get two Friday nights done. Na hapo ndipo niliweza kufanya Ijumaa mbili. Siku moja. That's fun. Hiyo ni mambo ambayo ni mzuri. So have two Friday nights. Kuwa na Ijumaa mbili. Let me tell you. Wacha nikueleze. The day is going to come. Siku moja inaja. I'm going to take a supersonic plane. Na nitachukua ndege ambayo inakimbia haraka. I'm going to preach in Dubai. Nitahubiri Dubai. I'm preach in London. Nihubiri kule I'll London. New York. Nihubiri New York. I'm a preacher in Los Angeles. Na nihubiri Los Angeles. And I'm going to preach in Hawaii on the same day. Hawaii siku I will, ile ile. I will chase the sun. Somebody said Nita, why are you going to do that? Nitakimbiza jua. Because I got a dream I'm going to do. Wa niuliza nifanye hivyo na mwana kwambie nitaota ndoto. Somebody said do you know how much that costs? Mtu akasema wajua hiyo ina gharimu nini? Who cares? Nani anajali? I don't. Sijali hayo. I will hayo. preach in those places. Na ubiri maeneo hayo. In yote. one day. Kwa siku moja. Just to put it on the books. Ili iweze kunakiliwa kwenye vitabu. Amen. Amina. Listen, God wants you to do some things. Mungu anataka ufanye mambo mengine. To set the trail to be trail blazers. Ili uwe mtu wa ku teketeza ama kuwasha moto. The first person to climb Mount Everest. Mtu wa kwanza wa kupanda mlima Everest. Everest. Wow. Akasema ah, oh. ah. Now, sasa there's so many people climbing Everest. Wengi sana wameweza kukwea mlima huo. Na wengi wanaangangania mle. And there's over 200 bodies dead, frozen. Na kila siku unapata kama mimi ni ambini kufia mle. Clean the mountain, you know, they're going to have to get all these corpses. Kwa hivyo kuna watu wa kuondoa miili hiyo ya watu ambao wamefikia. Because they actually mark certain places. Maana kuna maeneo fulani imewekwa alama. By the names of certain people. Kwa majina ya baadhi ya watu. Who died there and froze. Ambao walipata kufia mle barafu. He froze to death in 1967. Wali. This one froze to death in 1972. The body still there. Mina likufa mwaka 99 na miaka hiyo ituli. So there's all these landmarks. Hivyo wameweka hivyo kama really, landmark. They said Everest is like it's terrible. Hivyo wanasema mlima Everest. Somebody has to clean the mountain. Watu wanaokopa all of these dead bodies. So what was uncommon? Mahali ambapo hapakuwa pa kawaida. Became common. Imekuwa kawaida. The first person to break the 4 minute mile. Mtu wa kwanza kuvunja rekodi hiyo. Now everybody breaks it, you know. Leo sasa kila mtu anavunja rekodi hiyo. Are you with me? Kuna mimi. So 
God wants to use trailblazers here in Kenya. Mungu anataka kuweka watu wa kuvunja rekodi na kuanzisha mambo mapya. If a Kenyan can do it then I'm doing it too. Mtu aseme mtu ambao watu wengine wanasema kama Kenya what I'm naweza saying. na mimi naweza. And even if you come from a small village somewhere. Hata kama unatoka kijiji kidogo mahali. It doesn't matter. Haijalishi. God raise you up. Mungu atakuinua. And you be a trailblazer. Nawe utakuwa mtu wa kuwa. How many trailblazers do we have here today? Kuna wangapi mtu wa mianzo? The first lady will be happy to